In the development of this project, I was helped by PCBWay, which is one of the most experienced PCB manufacturing company in China in field of PCB prototype and fabrication. If you want to make your own PCB for this project or for any other electronic project, PCBWay is a great choice. They have a large online community when, where you can find the open source project and you can also share your project there. From my personal experience, I can tell you that on this community you can find many useful projects with already designed PCBs from uh, where you can place an order directly. To make an order for our custom PCB, we need to click on Quote Now. On the right side, you can see the place for ordering the PCBs for selected parameters. And on the left, there are additional options to tweak for your PCBs. So if you want your PCB, just type pcbway.com on your browser. Hello, this time I will present you an interesting way to use the PCB board from an old CFL bulb to make some useful electronics devices. As we know, these bulbs are no longer in use, so we can buy from the remaining stock for a very low price. I bought this 24 watts bulb for less than $2. I noticed the genius idea these days at the Zafer Yildiz channel and immediately decided to make some kind of the of device with a CFL bulb electronic board. We can remove the PCB relatively easily with a screwdriver. Uh, next, we need to release these wires coming out of the glass tube. So, this is the PCB that has been removed from, from the bulb. First of all, about the way of powering these bulbs. In general, the schematic diagram is the same for all types of CFL bulbs and consists of several parts. A rectifier consisting of four diodes connected in a so-called Gretz junction with a filter capacitor, switch mode converter uh, containing two, two switching transistors and a small toroidal transformer, usually with three windings. A choke winding that serves to limit the current and has the form of a standard transformer. And finally, a glass tube filled with a mercury or argon gas coated inside with a phosphor. In our case, the most interesting is this choke transformer. So, these are four diodes with filter capacitor, switching transistor, Toroidal, toroidal transformer with three windings and choke transformer in the form of a standard mini transformer. It is very important to emphasize that all CFL power supplies, regardless of brand or wattage, contain this type of choke transformer. When we making any device, we can freely ignore the rest of the circuit uh, and we will use the changing magnetic field created by this coil of the choke transformer. Our task is to wind uh, about 10 uh, windings with lacquered copper wire with a diameter of 0.8 to 1 millimeter, which ex actually represents uh, secondary windings. Next, we need to short connect these two wires 
in the first case or short circuit these two pairs of wires as the next option. This is the first case and the switching frequency is lower. This is the second case and uh, here these two capacitors are connected in series and the switching frequency is higher. Unfortunately, the second connection method will be avoided due to the relatively high frequency of oscillation and the transistor uh, the transistors may burn out very easily. Let's look at the signal shape of the secondary winding that we just added to the choke transformer. The signal is almost rectangular with curved edges and its frequency is about 23 kilohertz. Uh, this is the first case of a single wire output short circuit. This is that wire. Uh, now the most interesting part. To make an induction heater we need to wind about 10 turns, turns of copper uh, isolated wire on a body with a diameter of 6 to 7 millimeters and connect it to the previously modified circuit. Now we will insert this object inside the coil and it will heat up in the short time. Let's try. Uh, next, to make a DC power supply, we need to connect a classic rectifier consisting of a great junction, consists of four diodes and electrolytic capacitor for filtering. Let's, the me let's measure the output voltage. As we see, the output voltage is about 5.5 volts. We can also connect a battery charging circuit to this output. Finally, we can make a high voltage source. For this purpose, we need to connect the primary of, of the high voltage transformer to our modified circuit. I was surprised by the fact that even after long term operation of the circuit in this mode, the temperature of the transistors and the coil did not increase almost at all. And finally, in conclusion, this is a really great way as from an old CFL bulb we can make more functional devices in a very simple way. But of course, I would like to emphasize that even the most experienced do it yourselves should strictly adhere to the safety rules when working with high voltage. Uh, please do not attempt to recreate these, ex these experiments shown on video unless you are familiar with high voltage safety technical techniques, uh, be uh, because direct current, even above 60 volts, may be lethal even when the AC supply voltage has been, has been disconnected due to the stored energy in the capacitors.